Hey guys, it's Gomez Dilma again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on AR Foundation with body tracking and today I have a company of my robot right here who I'm actually using as an offset of my body. So what I'm going to show you today is in Unity how we can actually do the simulation where we're actually offsetting a 3D model that I set up in Unity. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. Alright guys, so let me show you what I have for you today which is I want to show you the basically the intro video that I just played and also the previous video just in case you missed the previous video intro. So this is the one that I took today and I'm going to be using for the introduction of this video. And, and basically what I have is just, you know, the green screen. I'm going to be using the couple effects that I use for Adobe. And, and also, you know, as you can see, this is probably very rough. I need to, I need to improve the camera angle but this can be used for a lot of things that you can probably see by the comments that you know I've been receiving on the previous video is this can be you know sort of like a utility to do what mocap does today so this is just you know experimentation and this video specifically is going to show you how we can offset in the previous video I, I did it opposite I didn't have the robot offset from my body I had it right basically on you know where I'm where I'm sitting which you know you can see right now is basically attached to my body and I move and it just looks like it's you know replacing me re replacing me in 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 my position so let me show you the the offset and then you know I'm going to be checking this into source code so you can see how it works so the code is completely free you can download it and I also went ahead and upgraded the entire project for Unity AR Foundation Essentials to version 2018.2.2 F1, which uses the latest packages that Unity provides for AR Foundation. And specifically, these features right here, if, you know, prior to the upgrade that I'm doing today, and you can look at that by looking at my GitHub repo, these options weren't available. I didn't have the human, po human body post 3D estimation enabled or the human body, body pose 3D scale estimation enable. So as soon as, that, as I downloaded the latest packages, I was able to do that. The packages that I downloaded, just so, so you know, before we, we before we jump into the demo, is are right here. So if I go into my manifest, and in fact, let me just go ahead and just jump into the source code, look at the manifest. So the, the ones that I upgraded were these ones right here. And I think it'll be easier if I just show you the source code, source code that changed. There's a lot of changes in here, and this is because I added the robot that Unity provides as an example, and then we're going to be replacing that in the next videos. But the one that I want to show you is the manifest, and some of the changes that apply that I applied today, and and this was required because I upgraded the version of Unity. But also, the other things that I upgraded were the XR packages. So anything that has the com that Unity that XR. Those are going to be the packages required to run the demo that I'm showing you right now. Of course, if you download my source code, you're not going to have problems. But if you want to create something from scratch, make sure that you're looking at the basically the new versions that I have that I have upgraded to. Once you have these versions upgraded and also the version of Unity that I have, then you should be OK. And then if you download my code, you can also run it and see how it works before you integrate it into your own project. So. What I have right now is I created a new scene. This scene is called the human body tracking. And just like I have in every other scene that I've done for AR Foundation is I'm, I'm always creating scenes because I, you know, I like to go back and test other features and so on. And I also like you to have every version of the, you know, AR Foundation video that I've done. So they're all in here, including this one. So let me show you how, what I have right now. So. I have the AR session, just like I showed you in the previous video, and also an AR input manager, which I don't think I need in here because I'm not even using the AR input manager. I'm going to leave it because I think I just cloned this from another one of my scenes, so it's fine. We, we can remove it if we want to, but for now, I'm just going to leave it there. And then I also have the, so on this one, this is just the AR session script. This one has the AR session origin. I've been showing you that on every single video. And of course, I have the basically the heavy lifter. This is the AR human body manager. And this is basically managing most of the work that comes from iOS. And this is one of the components, the core components that AR Foundation and of course Unity provides. So this is required that you add in order for you to start tracking 
positions and rotations from, from a skeleton. So once you add that, make sure that you have the body pose 3D estimation enabled. And then if you want to do 3D scale estimation, also enable that. And then you're also going to need a human body prefab. And I have that attached to my AR human body tracker. This also has a couple of scripts. One is going to be the human body tracker, which is an implementation very similar to the one that Unity did. And I'm going to show you the code as well. The difference with this one is I, I just did some renames and I also added a, a, an offset. And the main purpose of this video is just to show you what the offset does. So I have an X, Y, and Z. And what's happening with this is I'm using these three values to determine what the offset is going to be from the moment that a skeleton gets triggered. So let's say that you, you are not in the camera yet, but as soon as you show in the camera, and the camera can see, AR kit can see that there's a skeleton that recognizes you as a person, then it's going to try to map the coordinates and the positions of every part of your body to basically to the component that I have in AR Session Origin, which is the AR Human Body Manager. That's going to be getting information. That information is going to be passed to the Human Body Tracker because I have basically a handler in here that is capturing those events. And then what I'm doing is as soon as we detect an skeleton, I'm basically offsetting that by this value. The X value is the only value that I think I need right now because I if I don't if I have this set to zero, it's basically gonna show you what I just show you here. It's going to be exactly like that. It's always gonna be a zero position of the skeleton when it gets detected. But if you wanna offset it, just like I show you on the other video, just like I did here, here I have an offset of a negative number. And if you notice, let me just go back and undo what I just did. And I tested this quite a bit. I, if I started at zero, the skeleton is going to be at this position. But if I start, you know, scaling, actually offsetting that value of x, you can you can basically do what I did. I did a negative point a, and that offset the skeleton a little bit. If you want to go bigger, you can do bigger. And I think one cool thing with this is if I if I clone this multiple times and I change the offset, I could basically have a whole army of robots basically repeating what I'm doing. And you can do a lot of crazy things. You can actually do a slow motion if you wanted to implement something like that where, you know, the position is is as low, this is lower versus on one robot versus another robot. So there's a lot of things that we can experiment with. But for now, let's keep it, you know, simple and then we'll add more features. If you want to say that you want to change the offset of Y, if you want this robot to fly, let's say that it's not a robot and it's maybe an eagle or, or, or something that flies, then you can offset it as well. And then if you want to do the Z, you can also offset it as Z if you want to change the depth. And, and that's what I'm providing you with three different options on this slider. And then the other thing that you need is a human body manager. And that's basically an association with the air human, human body manager from here because this is the one that is going to detect changes and send changes from iOS to the script. And then the other thing that I did, and I started to work on this like I do in every other video, this is basically just a, a simple intro. It says right here to record poses. I haven't implemented this feature, but I'm going to implement it in the next video. And then for now, I also have a debug off and debug on op option. When you set debug on, it's basically going to show you the, the rotation and of the, the local rotation and the rotation of the basically of the body that gets tracked. I, I wanted to do that because I, I was debugging and I think it makes sense if you want to see more information. I I created three different text boxes that are used for debugging purposes. If you don't want to see them, you can just basically, basically turn them off. They're turned off by default, but if you want to turn it on, just basically open up this menu and then you know set debug to on. Then on the next video, I'm going to do a record poses. I am going to be implementing, basically I'm going to be tracking the position of every part of the 3D skeleton, and then I'm going to be recording that, and we're going to be able to replay it. So for now, I haven't implemented it. I just started the UI, and then I'm also offering you the skeleton offset so that you can offset the skeleton based on your needs. So let's go ahead and jump into the code just so that I can show you a couple of things. So the human body tracker, to be honest, this is very simple. This is just basically UI. I have different text boxes for information that I get from the human. And then some of the, wel the welcome panels, this means button, toggle options. So a lot of these things is very straightforward. So I'm not going to really go deep into that. 
But the human body tracker, this is one that I refactor. So let me just show you some of the things that I that I have. I renamed some of the variables because these to me this makes more sense. So the skeleton prefab, it's now it's now been renamed. I also added three different sliders for the skeleton offset. So you can see that they have a range. And this is just an attribute that Unity provides in order for you to add a slider to an inspector object. So in this case, this is a flow. It's going to go from negative 10 to 10. So in fact, this should probably be a float on both ends. I don't know why I did that, but I'm going to do that on every single one of these. And then this is the X, Y, and Z value. I, like I say, that AR human, human body manager, I don't know why I have a hard time saying that word. That's the one that is going to be basically sending those events, and those events are going to be captured here. And once we capture the event, we're going to be applying a post. And then I also have a dictionary. I show you that on the previous video where we're tracking the, the trackable ID and then the human bone controller. Then a couple of properties in here that get exposed. These are public. This one also public. And then the first thing that I do, and I show you that on the previous video, we get we basically bind to an event that gets sent from the human body manager and then i capture that event so that on human body's change is going to be triggered every time the skeleton changes position and ar kit actually changes the 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 actual tracking of the skeleton that is sending i don't know if that makes sense it's probably confusing but all it is is you know if something changes on the skeleton and AR key notes about it, we're gonna receive a message about it. So that's what this is doing. And then a lot of these things didn't change. I still have the same implementation. The one that I wanna show you that I, that is for the video today, it's gonna to be the offset. And I made a couple of mistakes when I was doing this. I was So this is where I'm doing the offset. But what I was doing, if you notice, this right here, there's, there's two for each. One of them is gonna be when, an, when a human body gets added to the screen. So this is going to happen when you show up and then when the the camera in AR key engine it's going to detect a human body in the screen so if it doesn't detect a human body this for each is not going to go it's not going to loop through because there's not going to be anything but as soon as it detects a human body it's going to go through here but this is only happening when it gets at it let's say that you move your hand and you lift your hand so what's going to happen is that human body is already being added so we're going to get a different event it's going to be the updated at this point, the skeleton tracker is going to have the value in the dictionary, so we're going to apply an update on that post. So that's the difference between these for each, and then this other for, for each. This one is going to be for adding, this one is going to be for updating, and then this one is going to be for destroying, because we want to make sure we're, we're keeping the, clean, the code clean. So the mistake that I made is I was adding an offset here, but I was, I was also adding an offset here. And the problem with that is it was actually adding to the position. So it was offsetting the value. Let's say that I changed the value of x. And let's say that the value of x of my offset was, let's say that it was negative 0.7. So what was happening, because the way that I'm implementing this, is I was updating that value, and it was incrementing the value. So at some point, the, the actual skeleton, the robot, was disappearing from the screen. Because you don't want to do it at the moment of the update. You want to do it just when you add the skeleton. Because that's when it's going to happen, and, and that's where we can apply an offset. Then from that moment forward, the, the, the human bone controller is going to have the initial, the initial offset, and then every other movement that you do is going to be applied off basically from that offset. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm grabbing the, the human bone controller transform position, and then I'm basically offsetting. So the other thing that you could do is if you, if, if you didn't want to do that just on the ad, you could actually do that here as well, but just don't don't take the the position. Just get an initial position, and then use that initial position, and then sum the the new offset. And then that way, if this position changes because we're changing it here, it doesn't get incremented every time. So you could do that as well, and then that would also work. So, but for now, I think I think what I did is just fine. We're gonna experiment with it and see how it works. But this implementation works, so what I'm doing is I'm basically grabbing the human bone controller, the transform position, and I'm basically grabbing the position and then basically offsetting it by the offset X, Y, and Z. And that's basically everything that I need to do here. And I didn't change anything else. This is basically, for the most part, all the changes that I did. But if you have any questions about what I just showed you, let me know. And then what I'm going to do for the next video is we're going to start implementing changes 
to the actual robot and see if we can change the model. And then by changing the model, I think we're going to be able to do some really cool effects with human body tracking. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because I have amazing resources for game developers. And also thank this guy next to me for showing up today, which has been really fun to actually set up. So thank you very much, guys.